Russ, quite often we get asked as to how CADA determines the issues, the concerns, and priorities. So within the, the shred mandate, how do we go about validating some of these issues and, and communicating with the community? That is an important question, John, and we're asked it a lot. Uh, we started out with a whole series of, um, of surveys, of consultations with the community, with companies, with players in the shred environment over the years. Uh, from that, we've based, built up a base of understanding of the program and gone forward to interviews, discussions with uh, CFOs, CTOs, and in all sorts of sectors across the country to understand what is happening. And then we validate it, not from the negative, but more from the positive. We usually are starting with the issue of what is happening, what's working, how well is it working. And then we start to explore the issues around, if it isn't, we're hearing the problems, where are they coming from? Are they isolated? So we try to do a fairly thorough job of understanding the source of the issue. Is it actually in the legislation? Or is it actually in the management process? Or is the solution in both? Russ, I see that uh, the shred advocacy also has connected to social networks. I understand you have a very active group on LinkedIn. How is that working out? It's actually a very interesting exercise for me. As you know, John, I'm a little bit of a skeptic about social media. But it has worked out very well. What, uh, we have over 300 people participating in it. Uh, the actual commentary comes from a smaller group of very knowledgeable individuals and practitioners and company individuals as well who have a lot of experience with the program. And there's a series of threads that have evolved. There is best practice, assistance to each other about how to deal with problems they're seeing, what works, what is the correct interpretation. A significant amount of discussion is occurring around what is the history of the interpretations? Where is it coming from? What is correct? What is the right way of going at this program? Um, and there's another thread which I think is very interesting. How should it be managed? What is the right environment to success? It is clear that everybody in that forum, I haven't heard of any exception, I'm sure there are, but they really support the idea of tax-based incentives of some sort. And the issue for most of them are, is how to make it work and what is an environment that fosters an effective, efficient credit. Russ, you mentioned that last year was a long year in terms of shred advocacy. What did you mean by that? Well, what we we're hearing was that uh, the program has not been going in a positive direction that problems that were initially identified early in the year in the larger files and difficulties that the companies were having with their claims has now spread across to the full sector. It's now, we are hearing comment from companies in the IT sector, which we had not heard in the spring. So it is a frustrating year to look back on. Uh, what we're looking for now is what is going to be done about it. And uh, we hope the climate is there to bring about some changes. So Russ Roberts, uh, uh, looking forward for this year, what are the key challenges for our SRDD advocacy? Where do we stand and, and what are we confronting as we go forward in the, in the next number of months? Well, we're looking forward to a new year, frankly. It's been a long haul last year. And what we're looking forward to immediately is the report of the taxpayer's ombudsman. Uh, we are hoping that it helps define the situation and the way forward for our companies and for CRA and the government. Secondly, uh, the government has set up a new panel. Their job is to explore new ways of supporting innovation in Canada, how to uh, really achieve business innovation, how to encourage it. Uh, it's an exciting exercise in this respect. If successful, it was, it's needed. So we uh, are looking forward to the input into that process. Uh, the first level of input is due by February 18th, and we're hoping our members will uh, examine the consultation paper and provide quick, short ideas as to what really would work.